What the hell? Hello again, everyone. Uh, fine music here. Episode 149. Yes, we're hitting that benchmark very soon. You know which one. Uh, in the meanwhile, to close out the 40s, the 140s, Fred Whitlock has uh, quite a revelation to I'm share with the un uninitiated like myself. So, Go ahead, Fred. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fred's checking on the condition of his artist. <laughs> okay. Is he going right. to pull through? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, um, today I'm talking uh, about Harvey Mandel, one of the great rock guitarists who unfortunately doesn't get enough credit for what he's added to rock music. Uh, he's not as well known as Jimmy Page or Jeff Beck, among others. Uh, I came across him in 1966. I've been following his work. Uh, he was the lead guitarist for the Charlie Musselwhite Blues Band, and they put a great album out called Stand Back. He came out of Chicago, cut his teeth on blues, and in 1968, he came out with his first solo album, Cristo Redendo Dor, and it, the title cut is just amazing with the horns and the sound. He was heads above a lot of other guitarists at the time, and it has a great funky version of Wade in the Water with horns. It's just, just rough. great album. Then he joined up with Canned Heat. He was on their album Future Blues and Live in Europe, and he also performed at Woodstock with them. Okay. Uh, he's on their big single, Let's Work Together, playing lead guitar. He also joined John Mayo for two albums. He was on USA Union and Back to the Roots. He played lead guitar. Then the Stones hooked up with him and was considering him for lead guitarist after Mick Taylor left. But unfortunately, they didn't take him. I think he would have been a much better choice than Ron Wood. <laughs> Uh, he's on two cuts on the album Black and Blue. Okay. In 72, he met, uh, he when he was with Mayo, he met Don, Don Sugarcane Harris, a violin player who was in the Mayo band at the time. And they left and jo joined together to form a group called the Pure Food and Drug Act. <laughs> they put one album out on Epic Records, a ma his first major label. Now, this has been uh, his, Mandel's weaker side was that he was on Phillips' label and the Jonas' label, and neither one of them really had the money to push him big. And he was on Epic Records for this last album with Harris and unfortunately Epic didn't get behind it very well. Then also in 72 came out as one of his more famous albums also The Snake and that's where he got his nickname Harvey the Snake Mandel. It's mm -hmm. a great album in his career of uh, gritty and the notes just fly. Uh, he has that he didn't invent the style, but he has that finger tapping style on his fret that he does that uh, just shines so well. In uh, 2016, he made a comeback and it really it put him back on the map with some rock guitar lovers. Uh, Snake Pit, Gritty, and it's classic rock guitar recorded live with minimal overdubs, has Space Monkey on it with a Hendrix feel to it. It's one sonic note after another. And then in 2017, he came out with Snake Attack and it makes use of electronic beats. It's his first down where he is solo on it. He plays every instrument. 
the keyboards, the percussion. It's a jazz rock fusion album with great titles like Super Squid, Freak of Doom, Exotic Predator. Once again, features great fret work. And then in 2022, his newest album, Who's Calling? It, That's my cue. <laughs> one I was taking one copious again notes. after another. It's pure energy. Robo Snake is a great cut. The title cut just comes out roaring. Crazy Town. It's it's a psychedelic funk jam. It, it, just one great sound after another. This guy has great chops on his guitar and. He's not afraid to experiment and and meander with sound. And I, I think that's a strong point for him. And if you decide to even get deeper into uh, Mandel, uh, Snake Box is a six CD set of his mm -hmm. five classic I believe all Mercury albums from the Phillips era, five albums plus a live CD live at the Matrix Club in San Francisco. And it features Jerry Garcia and Elvin Bishop on the CD with them. So that's a box set in case you want to even go deeper into his work. One guitar, he's a guitarist that just shines. He's an essential rock guitarist that gets in the blues, funk, jazz, and psychedelic sounds. He's pure energy, and I would say he's essential to your rock collection. I just have to agree. Uh, Fred, thank you so much for posting on the Fine Music website that album or the song from that album. Who's calling? Because uh, yeah, the cover attracted me. I thought, oh, this could be interesting, and then I listened to it, and I'm going, oh, hey, this is a good guitarist here. Got to check out what else this guy's got. And then the real revelation came. If I may be so bold, I want to share that because I think I know one thing you don't know about Harvey Mandel. There's an Australian release. Have you heard of it? Oh. No, maybe yeah, not. Yeah, okay, I get to. Okay, so that's call for a screen share of the Australian release. Okay, that means uh, do this, do that. Here we go. Now, that's the first album, Cristo Redentor. Yeah. And as you can see, it's not just 10 tracks. It's got... Oh, yeah, tracks. That's, that's the one that's called uh this is and more yeah yeah and it, and the and more is incredible yeah yeah that's got the can heat cuts and let's I think work together oh, nice. drug yeah. act cut on there too yeah and that might be the weakest song on the bonuses really um the rest is just phenomenal which so, which is so which great title <laughs> yeah. short short gentle cut actually hey uh and then just to uh fill in how you turned me on to this guy um uh which one there's one called baby batter yeah that's early and, 70s and it was also available under a different title oh electronic uh Pleasures or something like that. Totally different cover, exact same album. I was oh, wondering, oh. Maybe maybe this original marking of Baby Batter didn't go down with the cool folk, you know. Uh. It doesn't look like the coolest album. <laughs> and it's really not like his other album covers. I mean, uh, here's the snake one from 72. Oh, but it's too small for you to see. But Basically, it looks like he's the belt on a snakeskin belt. <laughs> and uh, the belt 
fuck all. That's what I'm trying to say. And then uh, I love the album Feel the Sound from 74. That is that is wow. probably my favorite by him. I mean, that those first albums, the Mercury albums, are just mind blowing. They're yeah, compare yeah, them to it's Hendrix. What he did, hmm. absolutely, absolutely. What a find! Cool. Only here on Fine Music. So, my... <clears throat> go ahead, go ahead. You wanted to say something. So more the so? tagline would be: If you yeah. like Jeff Beck, you'll like Harvey Mandel. <laughs> I head down to Lose Records and check it out. See if he's <laughs> and uh, I hope that will make him feel better. Because you said he's not, he's ailing, right? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. So who did come first, uh, Harvey Mandel or Jeff Beck? I think it was the Oh, Jeff well, I think Jeff Beck came out first. He was in the Yardbirds. Yeah. 66. Yeah. 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 But it's close. Well, 60, yeah. The Yardbirds came out. Yeah, I guess 66. Yeah. But they came out first. Yeah. <clears throat> and then uh the Charlie Muscle White band came out just a little bit later. And uh unfortunately, uh they Charlie Musselwhite Blues Band didn't get as much press as uh, Paul Butterfield Blues Band. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can barely bring myself to say it, but I will. <laughs> if you like Jeff Beck, you better check out Harvey Mandel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it, man. Okay. <laughs> 